Hi everyone, my name is Peter Thompson. I'm a middle school band director, and this is the Amplified Warmups YouTube channel. A couple of months ago, we had our state band conference, the Iowa Bandmasters Association, and it was a special conference for our program for a few reasons. Uh, for one, my band was invited to perform as one of the conference honor ensembles, and that was really fun, and we're really proud of what our students did there. But also the next day, my colleagues and I were invited to present a session titled Centering Fundamentals in Your Middle School Band. And it was a really cool opportunity to share some of the things that we had implemented that were helping our bands find an increased level of success. So in this video, I wanna share a somewhat summarized version of that presentation and also give you access to a lot of the resources that we shared in that session as well. We started with two questions and the first one was purely rhetorical. That is, are fundamentals important to you? And I think we should all answer yes. The second question was more reflective and that is if someone were to walk into your classroom and watch you teach for an amount of time, would they walk away with that same impression that fundamentals are an important aspect of your teaching? If I were to answer that, I would say, I think most of the time I'm okay, but there are other times where other things win out over properly centering fundamentals in my teaching. And so I think it's important that we take a look at some of the things that prevent us from putting the proper focus on fundamentals. For you, it might be time-based, like maybe your performances start too early in the year or maybe they happen so often that you're always just going right from one to preparing for the next. Or maybe you don't feel like you have enough time during the week in your lessons and rehearsals to devote more time to fundamentals. It might be kids-based, like you're worried that they're gonna get bored if you talk too much about fundamentals, or you're wondering if you can really be picky with middle school band students. Or you might not feel like you have what you need to teach more fundamentals. Maybe you don't have the resources. Maybe you just don't feel like you know everything that you need to. Maybe you don't have enough credibility with your colleagues or your students or the community to change the way things have been done. And these are all very real challenges that we need to address. For me, it's not necessarily any one of those. It's just that I get impatient. I see those end goals and I think I want to get there as fast as I can. That's just kind of my impulse. Uh, and I need to constantly remind myself that to really get to where I want to go, it's worth starting slow and getting the right foundation. So now let's talk about what are the fundamentals that we want to promote in our band program. Uh, I'm going to revamp what we did at the conference because it was about that same time I was reminded that there's already a really good framework for understanding what fundamentals are important and the order in which we need to be teaching them. And this comes from a band director in Texas named Robert Herrings. If you look up Henry Middle School Band on YouTube, you're going to see some amazing performances from Robert's band. But he calls these um, tarts, like sweet tarts, and he uses that acronym, T-A-R-T-S, to represent the different fundamentals and the order in which we need to prioritize them. The first and most important thing is tone. And along with tone, intonation. These go uh, so hand in hand that you really need to teach both at the same time together to make them work. Um, but we've gotta be tone first before we do anything else. We've gotta get the sound right. The second priority really kind of surprised me when I first heard about this, but since I've learned more about it and started teaching to this a little bit more, I'm fully bought in, it makes a lot of sense. The second priority is articulation because the way that we tongue um, can either make things a lot easier or more difficult for us on our instruments. And so we need to spend time making sure that our approach to articulation is what it needs to be. In a similar way, rhythm is something that affects everything else. Like you can have great tone, great technique, but if you're not confident in when you're supposed to do those things, it's not gonna matter. So we've gotta give our students the proper foundation in rhythm. The next one is technique, and this is the second T. I think the temptation is, if we're not really doing fundamentals the right way, the temptation is that technique is gonna go higher and higher on this list than it should be, especially if we get into more challenging music or we're preparing students for auditions. It can easily become all about learning the scales and learning the etudes or learning the, that challenging piece of music, and we tend to forego the other fundamentals. But the, the truth, I think, is that if we get these other fundamentals right first, like tone and articulation and rhythm, it's going to be the right foundation to approach technique and make that happen. And then finally, S stands for style. So here's where we're getting into phrasing and dynamics and more note-shaped articulation. So this is all listed in a chapter that Robert Herrings wrote in a book that's listed here on this slide, Foundations, uh, compiled by Chip DiStefano and Chris Griff. I highly recommend that you check out that book. Uh, I learned so much from it. It's an excellent book. Um, check that out. Robert calls these the sweet tarts. I don't know if that fits my personality to communicate it in that way, but I've been experimenting with a different kind of tarts, and that's pop tarts. And the reason why I like that is because it allows me to sneak in something that I think is really important and actually comes before these musical fundamentals. And that's all the cultural things that we need to do to really set the tone for what's going to happen in our bands. And so for me, 
the pop tarts are, are really important band room procedures, instrument operation, and performance etiquette. And if we can get these things right and have an attention to detail in these areas, it's going to make the musical fundamentals much easier to teach. The other thing I like about these is that these don't require any talent. We know that students are going to end up at different places with the musical fundamentals just based on different talent levels, and that's going to happen. There's no way around it. But these are things that students, regardless of talent level, can do together. And when we start the year with these and we set the culture right, it's going to help everybody move together into the musical fundamentals. So this is what we want to aim for and really prioritize in our programs. Next, let's talk about when do we want to teach fundamentals. And I think it's important that we teach fundamentals at the beginning. And that means three things. One, at the beginning of the year. We want to set aside time at the beginning of the year to make sure we're getting our culture established and those most important musical fundamentals established. That's why if you have a performance that's early on in the year, it might be a town festival or a homecoming parade or something else that maybe you don't have control over. Uh, if you can simplify your participation in that to any degree so you can focus more time on fundamentals, it's going to pay off because the amount of time that you can spend on fundamentals at the beginning of the year is going to determine where you end up at the end of the year. So set aside some time at the beginning of the year to really take it slow. Focus on setting high standards for your fundamentals. We also want to teach fundamentals at the beginning of each performance cycle. That means we don't just go right from one performance to start preparing for the next. We take a step back. We refocus on what's going to build into students' long-term development. And we also want to teach fundamentals at the beginning of every lesson and rehearsal. We want to make sure we have systems in place to make sure we're investing time every time we come together in, in building fundamentals. And we also want to understand that teaching fundamentals is a mindset that should inform everything that we're doing. So no matter if we're working on a difficult piece of repertoire, we need to do it with a fundamentals mindset. Because as middle school band directors, we know that we are not the end goal. We want to get what we do as good as we can, but we always know that we're sending students to something else. We want to make sure that we're set up for that next level. All right, so now let's talk about some of the specific methods and resources that we can use to teach fundamentals well. And we've put together a page on our band website, amsbands.org. If you go to the links category, there's a page called Resources for Band Directors. You can find a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about in this video. Uh, I'm not going to talk about everything on that page, and also there's some uh, things in this video that aren't on the page, so you'll need to watch the video and go to the page to make sure we're taking full advantage of all the resources we're offering. But let's start with some of these cultural things, the procedural things that we start out the year with. Last year, one of the biggest things that we did was create a band student handbook. And this was a real shift for me because I'd always thought, I don't want to be in an environment where there are a whole bunch of rules. Uh, what's worse, though, is being in a place where there are a lot of expectations and no one's bothered to tell you what they are. So I went ahead and just got out all my expectations in writing, presented it to students, and then as they went through the year, if they missed one of the expectations, we just reminded them of something we've already talked about. And that really built a lot of trust because they knew that we were trying our best to communicate with them and set them up for success. We knew that they were trying, and it was just a more positive uh, approach. We also put up signage in the band room to remind them of some of the more important procedural things so they didn't have to keep all the things in their head the whole time. They had those reminders there in front of them as well. Instrument care was a huge thing for us last year, and we created an instrument care sheet for every instrument of the band, detailing their supplies, what they needed to do on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly, to really take good care of their instruments. And we saw a tremendous increase in how students were caring for their instruments, how to set them down. Uh, we only saw one clarinet set down on its belt all year long, and that was by a university practicum student. Um, so our students did great with it. It also greatly reduced the amount of money that we had to spend on accidental damage, which was awesome. And then for performance etiquette, the main thing that we did was put together a video that had some guidelines for concert etiquette. We had students record their voices over that presentation, and we just showed that video before every concert, and it really made for an improved environment at all of our performances. So now let's talk about some of the musical fundamentals we want to talk about. First of all, tone. And I think the biggest thing with tone is just to always have a tone-first mentality. That we don't sacrifice tone for anything. Not for speed, not for range, not for complexity. We always have to maintain good tone with everything that we do. So have that expectations for your students and hold them accountable to it. 
as far as the work and the time that we invest into building better sound, a lot of it happens during our warm-up time. And for that, we mostly rely on amplified warm-ups, which is a system that I created. But in that sequence, you're going to find mouthpiece buzzing, long tones, brass lip slurs, woodwind octave slurs, all those things that are going to help to build embouchures and learn to use the air properly to get a good sound. Along with tone, we want to be building intonation. And my philosophy with intonation is let's throw everything that we can at it because it's just going to take a lot to get students where we want to be. My best recommendation is to get a Harmony Director. And you may have heard about these or seen them in action. They have been worth the investment for our program. We've got a couple of them now. There are a lot of things you can do with it, but don't be overwhelmed by the functionality. Even if you do nothing more than just press the hold button and sustain a drone that students can line up there playing with it. That's a great thing to do. Uh, for example, if you're, they're playing a major scale, just sustain the first note of the scale, and then they can hear everything that they're playing in relation to what an in-tune note sounds like. We also invested in a class set of individual tuners and pickups, and people have different thoughts about whether this is a good thing or not. For me, I really liked how students uh, not only learned how to tune their instruments properly, but also got feedback on what are the notes that tend to be out of tune on their instruments, what are the different things that affect the intonation on their instruments, and if nothing else, just having a tuner on the stand in front of them was a constant visual reminder that pitch is a priority. And so individual tuners were a big help uh, to our program last year. Another thing that I relied on last year a lot was tonal energy tracks. And I went through and programmed all of our concert band pieces into this app, and it would follow the meter changes and the tempo changes, but I could also set a drone for every point of the music so students could always have that target they were aiming for with their pitch. And the students who took advantage of that really saw it make a big difference in their playing. And then as far as amplified warm-ups, I've incorporated some of these elements into some new revised tracks that are out there now. So for example, not only do students have the opportunity to play along with an in-tune resonant version of everything that they're supposed to be playing, there's also a drone lead-in now for levels two, three, and four, so students can hear the pitch that they're aiming for before they play it. Articulation-wise, one of the biggest things we do is have a music learning process that includes a step solely for articulation. So once students have counted through a line, we have them go through a step that just isolates the articulation. So we call that ta. We, we say ta it. So we just go through and it accounts for the slurs, for accents, staccatos, that kind of thing, and just giving articulation the importance that it needs to have. As far as building the concepts and the skills for articulation, what we have in the warm-ups are uh, tonguing on repeated pitches is a big thing for me, and it just sets it up to have that proper concept of airflow and letting the tongue do what it needs to do. Uh, an overlooked aspect of articulation is how we release notes. We want tongues to stay down, out of the way at the end of the note, and just end notes with our air, not by re-articulating. And that's something that kind of goes a long way through the amplified warm-up system is, is not just when to end notes, but how to play releases properly. For rhythm, the biggest thing that we're doing is we're using the system teaching rhythm logically by Darcy Vogt Williams. And this has been a great system for our students so far. Just the writing aspect of it and the clarity of the counting system and the amount of repetition that goes into specific rhythms and providing that really solid rhythm foundation has been a, a big difference maker for us. My colleagues did a better job of implementing this than I did, so I'm looking forward to taking advantage of their hard work this year, but also building on it at the eighth grade level. Uh, another thing that we use is something called unison sheets or unison slides. And so what we'll do is we'll take a difficult part of the music, and it might be difficult for technique or key signature, or maybe there's a tricky rhythm involved and something that goes beyond what we're working at at a fundamentals level. And so we'll take that, we'll put it into notation, put it in a format that everybody can read from, and then put it on our projector screen. And then we can work on learning that rhythm together. And this is a bridge between the fundamental rhythms that we're working on and something more complicated. So we don't have to be just totally limited in our repertoire to what we're at at a fundamentals level, but we need to have a bridge to get there. And unison sheets or unison slides is a great way to do that. And then finally, we've started using a lot of metronome. And you have to know when to wean students away from the metronome before a performance. But just the increased amount that we used the metronome last year meant that time was like not an issue last year. That was a really impressive thing. So using a lot of metronome almost 100% of the time when the band is playing is, is a big help to our group. 
we're getting down to our last couple of fundamentals, and now we're going to talk about technique. And I think the biggest thing we need to do as middle school band directors is help students learn all the notes and fingerings that they can play on their instrument. We start off by doing that with major scales and putting them in the context of a key signature. Um, for teaching major scales, something that we incorporated last year was more writing. So we would have students not only write out the notes of the scale, um, but write out the key signature, write out the notes on a piano diagram so they can visualize where the sharps and flats are happening. Along with that, we also do chromatic scale progression. So we use this to build range and we work down to the lowest note, we work up to the highest note the students can play and every note in between. And so that's our main approach to technique and teaching those fundamentals. But I think technique goes beyond just learning the notes. Technique is also about all the instrument specific things that students need to learn. So for example, woodwinds, like when to use which fingerings, brass, you know, when to use this slide, percussion, there are lots of techniques. And this is where it can start to feel overwhelming as a band director. Not only the time that it takes to learn all of these things, but to keep them in the front of your mind, to remind students, to give them opportunities to practice them so they actually use, them, use these techniques at the right time in their music. It gets to be a lot. And that's why I think it's important to have a system that's gonna do some of that work for you. And that's why I tried to pack as much of this as I could into amplified warmups. So when students look at their parts, they're gonna see reminders about some of these techniques and they're gonna have the fingerings right in their parts so they have everything that they need to be reminded to implement and practice these techniques every day. And for me, that takes a lot of stress away, uh, along with just being able to get rehearsals started easily. You just press play on the audio track, it leads the students through a one minute countdown, letting them know rehearsal is about to start. Then it takes them all the way through the warm up, and with that one step, the first five or six minutes of rehearsal are covered. So I'm free to deal with individual needs as they pop up, or sometimes I just need to catch my breath and get in the right frame of mind for a good rehearsal. It just makes it so much easier, as well as giving students exactly what they need to develop these fundamental techniques. So do yourself a favor and check that out at AmplifiedWarmups.com. If you have a question about what level is going to be right for your band, just feel free to email me, peter at AmplifiedWarmups.com, and I'd be happy to converse with you, talk through what's going to be the best thing, best fit for your band. Um, I hear back a lot from teachers who use this, and they talk about not only how great it is for developing their band, but how much easier it makes their job. Our jobs are hard enough, so anything like this that we can use to make it easier I think we should take advantage of it. So let me know if there's any way that I can be of help with that. Finally, style I think is gonna be mostly something that we work with in the context of our performance music, but there are some skills that we can work on on a daily basis. Uh, one of the things that our warm-up system does is it gradually nudges students toward playing longer and longer on one breath. And so that breath endurance is a precursor to good phrasing technique. And that's a, a theme that's in every single sequence of amplified warmups. There are some skills that go along with dynamics. Dynamics is an easy concept, but it's, it's not an easy skill when you think about controlling your instrument in different ranges at different volumes. And so there's some skills that are isolated in the amplified warmups program that, that address those. Also note-based articulations like uh, accents and staccatos. It takes away all the complication from that and just allows students to focus on that one aspect. So there's a lot that we've talked about in this video. Some of these things were implemented over a long period of time, and so you're not going to be able to do everything all at once, but prioritize what you want to focus on first. If you feel like there's some things with the culture and procedure in your band program, I would highly encourage you to, to work toward that end because like I said, that really just sets the tone and attention to detail for the musical things that we do together. But once you've figured out what you want to focus on, get your colleagues on board, make sure you get really clear about what you're going to expect and you know, I, I find that students don't get bored with fundamentals, uh, and we can be picky with them as long as we're being clear and consistent with what we expect, and we're giving them the tools to make progress toward the goal. Uh, students don't mind when we have high expectations of them, so we can be picky with middle school band students. Um, take the steps to line up supplementary materials. Take a look at your performance calendar. Is it too intense or the things you can simplify? What's that performance every year that you just feel like it comes too fast and you're always scrambling to get that together? Maybe there's a way that you can adjust that. Uh, and then think about the performance selections. Are you, are you programming pieces that are too difficult, that are too far beyond the fundamentals that you're able to teach with your students? Uh, remember, we're always sending students to something. We are not the end goal. So the better we can set up students with a fundamental approach, the better off they're going to be for the long haul. So at this point, what I would love to have you do is just leave a comment below. Um, tell me about, you know, what do you want to prioritize? What's something that you 
you found new and interesting? What's something you disagreed with? Uh, what's a question? What's something that uh, you'd like me to go more in depth on in this uh, in this talk? So um, I'm filming this right before the beginning of the school year. Uh, I'm excited about the next year to get uh, go further along with some of these things. And I wish you all the best as you get started as well. Thanks. Have a great day.